What's up my friend, Abby here and welcome back to Ask Abby where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. It's been a little while since we did one of these videos, a couple weeks because I've been a little bit caught up in doing the three act story structure story beat breakdown series which I'm sure you know about if you've been here for like two minutes. Basically, we've been breaking down the three act story structure and talking about the psychology behind why it works. And um, last week and the week before I was like wanting to post the two videos close together because they are like one plot, even though they're like three different plot points, they're really like one movement in your story. So I was like, I have to be coherent and not interrupt this with an Ask Abby video. But that means that I've gotten a lot of questions since then and I'm very excited to jump into the questions. But first, give me a writing update. Comment below, this is the time where we all talk about our writing updates. I'm gonna tell you mine in a second, but comment below and tell me where you're at with your story or whatever it is you're working on currently, whether you're editing, writing, rewriting, Tell me in the comments below. And right now what I'm working on is, oh, I'm working on a few different things. Um, last week we had the 100 Days of Sunlight birthday party, which was fun. I did a live stream and we all jumped online and celebrated the book together. And that was really fun. Kind of crazy to think about the fact that the book has been out there for one whole year and I haven't published anything else yet. So that's why I'm looking more towards what am I gonna publish next? I thought I had settled on one idea, but now I have a few different stories that I'm, that are like, uh, uh, what's the word? Like in the running for <laughs> this, the follow-up book. So I'm in the process of doing some rewriting and revising and just reassessing okay yeah that's the word reassessing what i have going on as far as uh future books and figuring out what is being published next i know it's like so exciting and also really scary <laughs> and also of course i'm working on the 100 Days of Sunlight audiobook. So that's something that I announced in the birthday party live stream. But if you didn't make it, you might not know that I am going to be making a 100 Days of Sunlight, currently making a uh, 100 Days of Sunlight audiobook read by yours truly. Yeah, so it's gonna be really exciting and more behind the scenes exclusive stuff coming on that very soon. So stick around and let's stop rambling, Abby, my goodness. Time to get to the questions. Roll that intro and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here, here's how this works. You post your writing questions in the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group, and every other week I show up here on YouTube to answer as many of those questions as I can. Usually I pick about three to four questions depending on the length of each question. And to get inside this secret Facebook group, all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Okay, let's get to the questions. First question is from Chloe. I'm 35,000 words into the first book of a fantasy trilogy. All three books follow my main protagonist, A, but in the second book, one of the secondary characters, K, from the first book gets a related storyline and becomes another point of view character. I've just introduced K in the first book. Now I'm wondering how much characterization to do for her in the first book so that her transition to a point of view character in the second isn't jarring. How can I treat her differently to pave the road? For context, this book is set to be about 45 chapters and Kay has been introduced in chapter 15. Okay, first of all, I have a perfect video for you that I think you'll really, really like. And it's about adding and switching a protagonist in a story. So about halfway through a story, if you wanna add a protagonist or start switching back and forth through uh, to a different protagonist, I made a video on that exact thing, so check that out right there. Otherwise, it sounds like you've laid some really good groundwork here. So you already have introduced the secondary character. We get to know her at chapter 15 out of 45 chapters. That's great. That's like pretty early on in the story, certainly not more than halfway through the story, but even if it was halfway through, you can do that too. You can definitely pull that off too. So I don't think it would be jarring at all when you go to her point of view in the second book because you already have established who she is as a character. However, if you feel like you have to establish all these different things, you really don't. You really don't. You only have to establish three things. And if you know who I am, 
if you know me, if you've been here for more than 10 minutes, <laughs> which obviously you have, you know what I'm gonna say. Desire, fear, and misbelief. Because here's the thing, you want readers to like this new character's point of view, right? When they go into the second book, they're not expecting it to be going back and forth between these two point of views, or I'm not sure if you're switching completely to the secondary character, doesn't matter. Either way, you want your reader to enjoy this new point of view, obviously, right? You want them to love being inside the head of this character. So how do you do that? How do you make this character relatable to the reader? when you've already kind of established who the character we care about should be, which is the main, main character. This secondary character's internal conflict is going to be the one and only thing that makes her relatable to us. Obviously, the secondary character is going to take on some of the external conflict in the story, but what really connects the reader to this character, to any character, is going to be their internal conflict. And mark my words, establishing that in the first book and then giving us her point of view in the second book is gonna be like so, so rewarding. Like being able to see her her internal conflict from uh, from someone else's point of view in the, in the beginning, in the first book, and then being able to go into her head in the second book. Mm, that's gonna be so good, so good. All you have to do is establish her internal conflict as soon as possible. And as always, for more tips on establishing internal conflict, creating characters, all of that goodness, check out this playlist right here of my character creation videos. All right, next question is from Jay. Ask Abby, how early in a story do you expect to find the blatant and ongoing external conflict? Is internal and episodic conflict enough to sustain the first third of a novel? For example, my novel is split into three parts. Part one is mostly episodic and or internal conflict. Part two introduces minor antagonistic forces and part three introduces the bigger baddie who carries over into the sequel. Both antagonists are mentioned in part one, but not seen by the MC. I'm concerned this lesser conflict and building of stakes might not hook the readers, but it is necessary to build the fantasy world. Thanks. So this is a little bit of a tricky situation to navigate here because you want to build up the internal conflict, yes. Absolutely, but you also don't want to wait too long before you make something happen to your characters. And I hate to even use the words make something happen because that's so vague and most people just like take that the wrong way. See my inciting incident video <laughs> for a better explanation on what I mean because so many people think that the inciting incident is just the character being pushed outside a door, just something happening. The first big thing happens, like what's the big thing? Why is it important? Um, I go over all of that in the inciting incident video, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But you know me, you know what I always say. If you stay focused on your MC's internal conflict, you really can't go wrong. I mean, think about it. The only thing that makes the external conflict meaningful or matter at all to the reader and to the characters is the internal conflict, right? That's, that's what makes everything that happens important or not important. So if you take the time to make everything matter to the MC first, then you're giving the reader the opportunity to become the character, okay? And see everything that's happening from their point of view and know why it matters to them. That's the difference between character-driven stories and plot-driven stories. We've talked about that before as well. However, like I said, you don't wanna wait too long before you make something happen to your character. And by make something happen, I mean, push your character outside their comfort zone. I'm not saying this has to be the villain that pushes them outside the comfort zone or the baddie that they face down in the climax. In fact, the inciting incident can be totally unrelated to the protagonist and anything that happens in the climax. But something has to push the MC outside their comfort zone pretty early on. Otherwise, we're not pulled into their journey. We just see them, we relate to their struggle, and we get kind of bored with that after a while because nothing in their life is changing. There's no forward motion. So again, this is really more about the inciting incident. That seems like the, the thing that you wanna focus on. So check out my video on that if you haven't seen it already. Okay, next question is from Crystal. Hi guys, I've been so engrossed in Camp Nano this month and my outline that I had to I had an Ask Abby moment. I'm also betting that awesome Abby has even answered it before, but I'm not sure which videos to watch, so please guide me if so. The question, what is meant by standalone novels that are in fact standalone, but are also part of the series? This confuses me. I'm not intending to do a series, but at the end, could it be a possibility or would I have to go back and revise to make way for more 
books. Thank you. So basically what this means is a series where everything exists in the same universe, all the stories happen in the same universe, but and maybe have the same characters, but you don't have to read all the books in order, okay? So you don't need the context of one book to understand the other book. You don't need book one to understand book two to understand book three and so on. Some good examples of this would be like Sherlock Holmes or Jack Reacher. Um, also a lot of contemporary romance series are like this, that they exist in the same universe and they may have some of the same characters that like cross over between books, but you don't need to read every single book and you don't need to read them in a particular order to understand the context of what's happening. So yeah, it can be kind of cool because you can expand your your standalone into other books that exist in the same world or same universe or have the same characters and it can be a really cool opportunity to get people to read through a series even if it's not like you need to read this book to understand that one it can even be i think an interesting opportunity because a lot of people who aren't series reader readers might not pick up a book in a series but they would book they would pick up a standalone and then if they realize oh you have other books that are in like the same genre and the same universe and they like your writing style then you might get some read through of people who wouldn't have originally committed to a whole series you know what i'm saying so it can be kind of a cool unique way to grab people and pull them into a series without making them commit to a whole series from the outset. Okay guys, awesome questions. That's it for this week, this episode of Ask Abby, but I will be answering more in the next episode of Ask Abby, which won't be next week, but it'll be the week after. So stick around for that. And if you would like your question answered here on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Facebook group. It's an amazing community of writers just like you. And before I even get to all these uh, questions to answer them on YouTube. Usually there's like a bunch of people in the community that answer the questions and, and talk about and discuss these questions and open up just these really cool discussions about these writing topics. So that's something that I think you would really love. And uh, if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. When you stay focused on the... <coughs> no, maybe it wasn't too bright. I don't know, I can't tell. Ah. It's unbelievable. Like the allergic reaction I have to this ring every time I wear it. Immediately, like probably two minutes after wearing it. It's ridiculous. <laughs>